Young people make up nearly 50% of the world's population, yet they're too often excluded from the decision-making processes that affect their lives. Involving young people in discussions surrounding social issues promotes a more egalitarian, more inclusive, and better society. It also brings the creativity, innovation, and new ideas that youth are known for. In Canada, only 1.65% of parliamentarians are in their 20s. 85% of members are aged 40 and over. Yet in the population, they only represent 52%. So it's clear that young people are underrepresented in the policymaking process, especially since the decisions that are taken today will affect young people for a long time and the rest of their lives. As a young person, you have the right to be heard. And to do so, you must have access to civic spaces. Civic spaces are laws and structures which allow you to meet with other people from groups and associations, express yourself through social and traditional media, and meet with government and elected officials that represent you. These spaces allow you to express your opinion on issues that affect your quality of life and your future. In addition, your self-expression in those spaces might affect the public and private sector decisions that affect the well-being of community, society, and the environment at large. These civic spaces are different in each country. In a democracy, freedom of expression and assembly are encouraged, whereas in authoritarian countries, they are restricted. The tools used to affect change vary with the type of civic space. When civic spaces are restricted, citizens turn to activism. Activism occurs when the government fails to create spaces for citizens' self-expression or citizens feel their grievances are not heard by the government. In such cases, people exercise their right to be heard in spaces that were not originally designed for this, such as the streets. One local example is La Planète s'invite dans les écoles movement and the demonstrations that followed all across the province. Advocacy occurs when the government allows or creates spaces for self-expression. Advocacy occurs through the public discussion or discourse in favor of an idea, a cause, or a concept. People can be advocates and speak their truth through different means, such as writing letters, uh, social media, as well as artistic expression. You can use influence when governments want you to be directly involved in changing current policies or laws. In these cases, you have open access to decision-making processes, so you can offer your recommendations or directly influence policymakers or government officials. These three tools are often used all at the same time to have a maximum impact. Think, for instance, of the fight against climate change. Even in countries with open civic spaces, such as Canada, these three tools are often used at the same time to force governments to act fast and boldly. We want to help you develop one of these tools, influence, which is often used behind closed doors to affect change. My name is Caroline Brouillet, and I'm a climate policy researcher at Equitat. Previously, I was a social impact strategist at Credo, a B Corp located in Montreal. I met Oxfam Quebec last March as part of the formal consultation process for the G7 summit in Canada. I was selected by Young Diplomats of Canada to be one of the four youth representatives in the G7 process. I negotiated on climate change and the environment related issues. I hope that the ecological transition is an opportunity for us to build a fairer, more inclusive and happier society. I used two different tools to have my voice heard as a young citizen. Advocacy. With my friend Kara, we wrote an op-ed on the relationship between Quebec's political parties and their young citizens. It was signed by 200 young citizens from across Quebec. Last year, I partook in Oxfam's World Walk, where I was sponsored by Zachary, a 16 years old, passionate about fair trade as well as education. I also used influence to have my voice heard. As a Y7 representative with my G7 colleagues, I developed a set of recommendations that were to be considered by G7 officials as part of the Charlevoix Summit. Here are three tips I have to maximize your social impact through your influence strategy. Setting goals is a good opportunity for you to think about the impact you want to have. It's also a good moment to ask yourself if you're there to create lasting social change or simply add a line to your resume. When you get involved as a young 
person, you'll often find yourself in spaces where speaking up is intimidating and where contributions are quite limited. So it's very important to think beforehand of the impact you want to have and to be strategic. When thinking about impact, ask yourself, what's the problem I'm trying to solve? What does the world look like if this problem doesn't exist anymore? And within your own context, in the short term, what can you do to contribute to the resolution of this problem? It's also essential for you to think about your values. Values are the key guiding principles that drive and motivate you. How can you make sure your involvement will reflect those values? The idea here is to document these two concepts impact and values before you start on your influence strategy. This way you can go back later on and see what worked, what didn't, and what can be improved. My second tip is to map the main players. Because change is social, it's important for you to get to know the civic space you're in. From a collective standpoint, it's important to ask yourself which groups of people are affected by the problem you've identified. It's also important to ask how different groups are affected in different ways. Ask yourself how your experience is different from other groups' experience who are affected by the problem. Each individual has different identities which affect how they live a problem, but also the amount of power they have to solve that issue. For example, as a white woman working in an office, I'm affected by climate change very differently than racialized and ind indigenous peoples who suffer disproportionately the consequences. I'm also affected very differently than someone who works in the oil and gas industry. And it's important that I take into account all these different perspectives when I think about the issue. I need to think about how I'm going to include these different perspectives in my influence strategy and to ensure that the solutions I propose include these very different perspectives. As part of the mapping process, I need to identify my allies. There are for sure other people who have thought about these issues before me and their experiences can be very informative. I also need to identify my, opon my opponents. My opponents' opinions and lived experience are also valid and understanding them will help me devise a better influence strategy. Now that we have a good collective understanding of the issue, it's also important to remember that we're working with humans. So try to understand the people you work with from an individual perspective. What are their hopes? What are their fears? Building empathy will only bring a more successful influence strategy. The third tip is to find your voice and to be yourself. Find a way to express how an issue affects you and your peers in a way that is authentic. When I talk about climate change, I often say that I wonder in a world with 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming if I want to have children. I'd be too afraid for their future. This story hits home more than if I just simply stated stats and data on the issue. People connect with real human experiences. Ask yourself how you'd tell this story to your best friend rather than use public policy jargon, which exists already in those civic spaces we're discussing. Humans love stories because we instinctively seek to connect with our shared experiences. Using emotions also allow us to do that. So say I'm scared, I'm angry, or I'm sad. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. My friend Larissa was invited as a speaker to the Women's Forum in Paris. She wore a red dress for her speech to shine light on an issue that deserves a lot more attention than it is currently getting, missing and murdered indigenous women across Canada. All in all, the most important thing is to be authentic. The good news is that more and more institutions are recognizing young people's desire to get involved and are reaching out to them to get their perspectives and their ideas. These are great opportunities for us to influence. If leaders do not listen to their people, they will hear from them. In the streets, the squares, or as we see far too often on the battlefield. There's a better way. More participation, more democracy, more engagement and openness. That means maximum space for civil society.